Hi, welcome to Story Sauce. I'm Sid. And I'm Serena. Hi, Serena. Hi, Sid. <laughs> At Story Sauce, we read stories from around the world, mm -hmm. all from all different eras and cultures and traditions, and bring them all together in English in a big sauce of stories. You can find questions in the descriptions below. Mm -hmm. And if you click our Facebook link, you'll find the answers to those questions. But try not to look at the answers until you've tried to answer the questions. And you can also vote by clicking the card up in the corner of your screen and letting us know if you think the videos are a little bit too easy or a little bit too difficult or if the questions are too easy or too difficult. And of course, if you enjoy Story Sauce, please subscribe to our channel and you can also hit the bell to get notifications and you can subscribe um, or like us on Facebook as well. Okay? So what is our story for today? Well, Serena, today we are going to read a Native American folk tale from Canada. Mm. It's called How Rabbit Deceived Fox. Mm. Okay, you guys ready? You ready, Serena? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. How Rabbit Deceived Fox. Long ago in Canada, there was a rabbit who was a great thief. He liked most of all to steal at night, and he crept quietly into gardens and fields where Native American vegetables were growing. He especially loved cabbage, lettuce, and beans. Now, not far from his home, there lived an old widow woman who had no children, mm. but who kept a little garden from which she made a good living. Mm. All day long, from dawn until sunset, she worked hard tilling her garden, watering her vegetables, mm -hmm. and keeping them free from weeds. Mm. She grew green cabbages and mm -hmm. red carrots and yellow mm. beans and big fat pumpkins mm. and yellow corn. Mm, yummy. Mm. Which she traded with the native hunters in return for fish and meat. Mm. In this way, she always had plenty of food and she lived very healthily. Mm. Rabbit, going on his business one day, discovered her garden, although it was deep in the forest. Mm. Every night, by moonlight or starlight, he robbed the garden oh. and he grew sleek and fat from the results mm. of his theft. Mm -hmm. Morning after morning, the old woman found that many cabbages and carrots mm. Mm, were missing from her garden. She thought that Rabbit might be the one stealing from her because she had heard that he was a great thief. Oh. She stayed up and watched her garden for many mm. nights, but she was never able to catch the thief. Mm. One day she said to herself, hmm, I will set up a scarecrow and I will put it in my garden gate uh, right. and it will frighten away the robber. Right. I must save my vegetables or I'll starve when the mm -hmm. cold winter comes. Mm -hmm. The concerned old woman picked gum and balsam. That's the sticky residue that comes mm -hmm. from spruce and fir trees. Mm -hmm. Uh, she, um, she, she made this gum into a figure in the shape of a little man, the scarecrow. Oh, she okay. made two eyes from glass beads and a oh. nose from a pine cone oh, and okay. hair from corn tassels. Mm, cute. Then she placed the figure at the entrance to the garden where she knew the robber would come. Now, mm. she thought, it will scare away the thief. Hmm. When night fell and the moon rose above the trees, rabbit came along again to steal his nightly meal. As he came near the garden very softly, he saw in the moonlight what he thought was a man standing in the path by the garden gate. Ooh. The moon hung low over the forest and there was a thin gray mist on the earth for it was near to autumn and the nights were already cool. The figure of the little man looked larger than human in the misty light and it cast a long black shadow on the grass. Rabbit was very scared, and he trembled like a leaf in the wind, but he stood quiet behind a tree and listened and watched the strange little man for a long time. But the strange figure did not move, and Rabbit didn't hear a sound other than the chirp of a cricket. Then, with great caution, he came closer, but still the little man did not move. Hmm. 
Then his fear left him, and he grew bolder, for he was very hungry, and he could smell the vegetables in the still night air. At last, he walked bravely up to the little scarecrow man and said, Get out of my way and let me pass. But the man did not move. Then Rabbit gave the man a sharp blow with his fist. Yikes. But still, the little figure did not move. Rabbits got stuck in the sticky fur tree gum and he could not pull it away. Then he struck out with his other fist and it too, like the other, became stuck in the gum. Oh, he's stuck good. <laughs> I shall kick you, said Rabbit in a rage. Take that. And he kicked out wildly with his foot. But his foot, like his fist, stuck too. Then he kicked with the other foot, but that too was held in the gum. Rabbit was now very angry, and he said, Now I shall bite you. But when he bit the little man, his teeth, like his feet mm -hmm. and hands, became glued to the scarecrow. <laughs> then he pushed with his body with all his might, hoping to knock the little man down. But his whole body stuck to the little man. Well, he kind of deserves it. <laughs> he cried out loudly, for he had become very afraid. And the old woman, when she heard his yells, came running out of her house. Aha, she said. So you are the robber who has been stealing from my garden. I will rid the world of a thieving pest, for I will kill you this very night. Oh, boy. Then she pulled him away from the gum figure and put him in a strong bag and tied the bag with a sturdy string. She left the bag on the path by the garden gate and went to look for her axe to kill Rabbit. While Rabbit lay there wondering how he was going to escape, Fox came prowling along. He tripped over the bag for he did not see it in the shadows and he plunged forward head first to the ground with a great thud. He got up and began kicking the bag. He was mad. Mm -hmm. He kicked poor Rabbit's back until Rabbit cried out in pain. Who are you in the bag? Asked Fox when he heard the cries from mm -hmm. Rabbit. I am your friend Rabbit, was the answer. Mm -hmm. What are you doing hiding in the bag? Asked Fox. Then Rabbit suddenly thought of a way of escape. Uh -huh. He knew that Fox had long been looking for a wife, but that no one would have him as no one trusted him because his fame for treachery and slyness was so great. I'm not hiding, said he. The old woman who owns this garden wants me to marry her granddaughter. And when I refused to do it, she caught me and shut me up in this bag. She's just gone to bring the, uh, to bring the girl from her house for she's determined to make me marry her here in the moonlight this very night. Oh. I don't want to marry her. She's big and fat and I'm very small and lean. Okay. Then Rabbit began to cry and oh. Fox said, I've been looking for a wife for a long time and I like fat people. Oh. Let me get into the bag in your place and I will marry the granddaughter instead. I'm oh. sure the old woman won't recognize me in the shadows. Oh. Well, Rabbit gladly agreed. He tricked him. Tricked him good. <laughs> Fox untied the bag and let Rabbit out and got into the bag himself. Rabbit tied up the bag and hurried away as quickly as he could. Soon the old woman came back carrying her axe. She sharpened it on a stone and said, Now I will kill you and you will steal no more in my garden. A poor woman must live untroubled by such robbing mm. rogues. Mm. When Fox heard these words and the sound of the stone upon the axe, he knew that he had been deceived by Rabbit. And when the old woman opened the bag, he jumped easily out with a sudden bound and was away before she could catch him. He got away. He swore by the starlight that he would have vengeance on Rabbit. All night long he searched for him and all the next day, but he couldn't find him for a long time. 
But finally, he came upon Rabbit in an open space in the forest on the mm -hmm. other side of a stream, eating mm -hmm. his fill of wild vegetables. Uh, He's such a pig. I uh, yeah. Fox tried to co coax him across the stream to his side, for he himself was afraid of the water. But mm. Rabbit would not go. Why don't you eat some cheese, said Rabbit. There's a big round cheese in the stream. Uh, mm -hmm. Fox looked into the stream where Rabbit pointed, and there he saw the reflection of a big round yellow moon. Oh. He thought it was a round cheese. Because they kind of look the same. Yeah. The moon, and, the moon is made of cheese, you know. <laughs> yes, we were told that. <laughs> <laughs> and he jumped in after it, for he was very fond of cheese. Rabbit hoped he would be drowned, but the stream was shallow, and Fox climbed out with no cheese and with only a bad fright and a wet coat. Hmm. He was very upset for he knew that Rabbit wished to do him harm, but he kept his anger to himself. Oh, that's good. Hmm. Rabbit was still eating contentedly. What are you eating? said Fox, trying to hold him in talk until he could think of a plan to catch him. I am eating good ripe fruit, said Rabbit. I'm eating melons. Throw me one, said Fox, for he was hungry. Rabbit threw him a large, round, wild cucumber, all covered with green prickles. Mm -hmm. Swallow it whole in one mouthful, said oh. Rabbit. It's very good that way. Mm -mm. <laughs> it was still night, and Fox could not see what he was eating. He swallowed the cucumber in one gulp. Oh. Mm. The prickles stuck in his throat. Yeah. And he almost choked to death. Oh my goodness. And while he was choking and spluttering and trying to cough up the cucumber, Rabbit ran away as fast as he could, laughing heartily to himself. Fox knew that he had been tricked again, and this time he swore he would kill Rabbit as soon as he could find him. He resolved that when he saw him next time, he would not give him a moment to live. Mm -mm. Rabbit hid among the dry underbrush all the next day, but when the sun went down, and the sky was red in the west, and the wind was very still. He sat on a log and played softly on his flute. Oh, that's mm. nice. For he was a great musician. While he was playing, Fox suddenly came upon him. But Rabbit saw him watching him through the trees. Fox was just about to spring upon him when Rabbit said, the chief's daughter has just been married to a great warrior, and the wedding party asked me to sit here and make music for them with my flute as they pass by. They have promised to pay me well, and they have invited me to the wedding feast. He likes food. <laughs> yes, he does. Come and join me and play too, for you will be well paid, and we will go to the wedding feast together and have delicious things to eat. Okay, well, Fox thought he would let Rabbit get the pay he had been promised, but then he would rob him and kill him, and he would take his flute and go to the wedding feast alone, and his vengeance would then be complete. Fox said to Rabbit, I have no flute, so I cannot make music, hmm. but I will sit with you to see the wedding guests go by. Oh. But Rabbit said, take my flute, I have another one at home. I'll go and get it. There's still plenty of time. So Fox took the flute and began to play loudly, and Rabbit slipped quietly out of sight, pretending to go home for his other flute. But instead of going home, he set the underbrush on fire all around the log on which Fox sat. Fox couldn't hear the fire crackling because of the loud music he was playing on his flute. And he thought the light was the bright light of the moon. The fire was almost upon him before he knew he was in danger. He tried to get away, but the fire surrounded him. At last, in despair, to save his life, he just jumped right through <sighs> the fire. Oh, ooh. He escaped with his life. <sighs> I guess. But his eyelids were singed. 
Oh, and the sleek black coat with its silver spots was scorched to a red brown color. Oh. He was in great pain. Oh. He concluded that Rabbit was too clever for him to cope with, and he resolved to leave the rabbit alone mm. and to forget about his revenge. <laughs> Probably a good idea. Mm. Because he was very glad to get away with his life. But he decide, decided never again to live on friendly terms with Rabbit. Mm. And since that night, rabbits and foxes have never hunted together. Oh, that's right. And to the present day, the descendants of the fox have red eyes and a red-brown <gasps> coat, just like fox, there you after go. rabbit set him on fire. Yeah. So that's why they're that color. Oh. Hmm. I, I didn't know that. that, did you? No, I did not know. That's really cool story. How cool is that? Native American story, which often kind of explains their understanding of the natural world. That's yeah. really nice. It is. Well, we hope you enjoyed our story today, mm -hmm. um, How Rabbit Deceived Fox. Mm -hmm. And we hope that you come back and enjoy more stories mm -hmm. and more questions and learning more English with Story Sauce. Thanks. Bye. Bye.